Greetings, deeply loved children of God, and welcome to Storytime with Pastor Maureen. I am Pastor Maureen Howard of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa, and as I greet you each story time, I greet you with great joy as we come together to read the stories from the Bible that tell us why Jesus came. We are in the season of Advent, and we only have two more days left of story time with Pastor Maureen. We have today, and then tomorrow, and then Christmas Eve. Yes! Yay! The reason for our waiting will be over. The celebration of the rescuer born to us. So we are reading the Advent storybook, 25 Bible stories telling, showing why Jesus came. And this book is written by Laura Ritchie, and it is illustrated by Ian Dale. And again, this is the cover of the book that we are reading from. Well, as we draw closer to Christmas and the birth of Jesus, the story that we're reading today is called Humbled Kings. And this is from the book of Daniel, chapters 3 through 6. But first, let's read a verse from St. Luke, which is, or uh, chapter 1, verses one through, uh, 51 through 52. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts and has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. Well, let's read Humbled Kings. Daniel was in Babylon many years and served many proud kings. Daniel saw God humble each of these kings to remind everyone that God is the true king. Once, King Nebuchadnezzar made a statue of himself. He demanded everyone bow down and worship it. If they didn't, they would be killed with fire. Three of Daniel's friends refused. They said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery fire furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And that's from Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. The king was furious. The three men were thrown into the fire. But God saved them. The king was amazed at... Let me read that again. The king was amazed at God. Daniel also served King Belshazzar. Belshazzar used special cups from God's temple to praise his own pretend gods. Then fingers appeared and wrote a message on the palace wall. No one could read the writing except Daniel. God's message said that Belshazzar's kingdom would end because he was not worthy. And that very night, the king was killed. His throne was given to Darius the Mede. Darius put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. The other leaders were jealous, so they tricked the king into making a law against praying to anyone except King Darius. They knew Daniel wouldn't stop praying to God. He prayed three times a day. The king did not want to punish Daniel. 
When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, King Darius told him, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And that's found in Daniel chapter 6, verse 16. King Darius didn't sleep at all that night. At dawn, Darius rushed to the lion's den. Daniel was not harmed. God had shut the lion's mouths. Then King Darius wrote a royal law that said, In all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to shall be to the end. And that's from Daniel chapter 6, verse 26. And here's the picture. And you can see the writing on the wall that no one could read. And it was written on the wall by God's hand. And you can see Daniel there reading the world the wall telling the king that he would be destroyed that his kingdom would come to the end and so Belshazzar we know ended that night died and again here is the picture of that wall and we also know that the story of Daniel in the lion's den and how Daniel was thrown in there, but God saved Daniel. And so we have a question. How is the king of kings different from these kings? Who is the king of kings? Do you know who the king of kings is? Oh, you're so smart. You are right. The king of kings is Jesus. And so we have examples of kings here. How is Jesus different from these kings? Kings, the king of kings shows love and is a servant to all. That's right. Jesus serves his people with love and with peace and worships God only. That's right. God is to be worshipped. God is our living God and we worship one God expressed to us in three ways. Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one, but we worship one God and that's called the Trinity. God expressed in three ways. And we are waiting in Advent for Jesus, the Son of God, to be born. And that will happen in a couple of more days. We'll celebrate Jesus' birthday. But we're also waiting in Advent for Jesus to return. So deeply loved children of God, let's on the count of three say, Jesus loves me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves me. But we also know that Jesus loves everybody. Jesus loves the whole wide world. So let's on the count of three say Jesus loves our neighbors too. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves our neighbors too. That's right. Deanne and Daryl and Tug and Olive and Navy, God says to you, you are precious and honored in my sight and I love you. And Daniel and Nancy and Lydia and Myron and Kim, God says to you, I love 
you. So deeply love children of God. Have a grateful day today because you are worthy of God's love and God sends Jesus to prove how much God loves you and saves us. Yes, saves us. And so if you are listening to this story as a bedtime story, well, then you sleep well tonight knowing that you are deeply loved by God. And I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for another story time with Pastor Maureen. So have a grateful day and I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, you are deeply loved by God.